brought to you by Express Care Health and Skin Center. Get in, get out, get better. Welcome back, everybody. For our topic this week on healthy living, we are talking about infertility, a condition that affects both men and women in distinctly different and very, very obviously significant ways. So Dr. Yikalam from Express Care is here. Now, Dr. Lam, infertility is very fascinating from a medical standpoint, even for those of us who don't study medicine, because it's equal parts physical as well as mental. A, it, an affliction it, of both, would you agree? It can be. Um, actually, it's, it typically is actually more physical, but of course, psychological state affects a, especially a woman's fertility, not so much the male development of sperm, but for women, it, when we're phys, uh, psychologically upset, our periods will be irregular and we'll have fertility issues. And that's actually good because our body is, is um, shutting down more stress when we're already under stress. We're preventing pregnancy mm -hmm. that's our body's way of doing that mm -hmm. well i've i've often seen that like um you know i've read about and like you know have talked to a few people over the years you know as a journalist of you know men that have been suffered from infertility mm -hmm. and where i was going with this was was for men it's a psychological thing because that attacks you know your core of oh, your of your manhood and you know kind of like as an after effect yes um, well, it, it is you know infertility it's, affects your psyche that's for sure yeah your when confidence people, level yes you know, when people are planning to have a child and this is one of their deepest most personal desires um, uh, uh, to procreate and and to to you know have a family and uh, then they have to deal with all of that and perhaps find other ways to have a family so yes it can really take a toll on people mm -hmm. and on their marriages also yeah now with men's health do we typically see the conditions of infertility you know like uh, either correlating or causing you know, either one or both of you know conditions like uh, erectile dysfunction or things like that oh um, well the interesting thing about men is that um, uh, they, they continue creating sperm all the way up until their late you know 70s even their 80s and can have children even though maybe their erectile function isn't that good same with let's say uh, for example, paraplegics, people that have trouble, you know, below the waist, basically, mm -hmm. they still produce sperm. So they, they can, there are different techniques to extract the sperm, and those people can still have children. So it's not really related um, Doc, that way. Uh, Dr. Stephen Hawking actually had a... There you go. Had, had I believe... A, one child, if not two, yes. like after he was already had the onsets of Lou Gehrig's disease. Right, that's uh, true. Yeah, the very debilitating, you know, yeah. and basically, well, obviously, it took his speech, and you know, there's a, uh, you can watch the theory of everything if you want to find out about uh, Dr. Hawking. Um, what exactly causes infertility, both in men and women? Well, you know, there that's that's the problem. There's just so many reasons. Um, typically, when a couple comes and and they're having trouble having children, first of all, in for the definition is you've tried for at least a year, you know, and consistently trying because a normal couple will have about a 15% chance per month of getting pregnant if they're having intercourse regularly. Mm. So after a whole year has passed, you've given it a good try, and um, you know the most most common reason for infertility is, is aging, especially for women. So for us over the age of 35, we start having problems over age 40, it's more difficult over age 45, it's practically impossible. Although these days there are so many technologies and, and, and uh, uh, developments that you can have, you know, donor eggs, surrogate mother, all kinds of other um, technologies are available, of course they're quite costly. So just for, for a woman to, to plan her life, her reproductive uh, life, she should start thinking about having children by the time she's 30 so that there's a window of time in case there's any problems. As far as for men, the, the most common reason for um, infertility um, is low sperm count and that can come from so many different reasons when we're discovering chemical toxins in the environment can cause that, laptop use, sitting with your laptop on your lap. You can heating. literally barbecue your boy you bits, really as, as is so often said online. Yes. Yeah. And heat, heat really does impair testicular function, and that's why the testicles hang outside, because they're supposed to be nice and cool. So if you're sitting in the car all day around, long driving, you're heating it up, or if you're very obese, you're also heating it up, and you'll have a lower sperm count. So wear boxers and air out and try to stand up, not sit down. I'm glad you brought that up because I know that, you know, Hollywood so often makes makes light of that, but that is a medical suggestion. Yeah. They say, you know, like if you For have sure. very restrictive underwear, if you're yeah. wearing, you know, like a takes, briefs and everything, you have to. Yeah. You'll, um, when, you know, when they do sperm counts, um, 
you can have your sperm count done. It's really very simple. You get a lab form, you go to the lab, you produce a sample and they check it. They must check it within about 30 minutes be because after that the sperm stop moving and they can't count them as well and all that. So if you um, get a sperm count done in, in your current situation and then you implement these cooling techniques for the testes, meaning you stand up, wear boxers, lose weight, all that. Don't, don't put your laptop on your lap. All these things really make a big difference in a short period of time, like a month to two. Mm -hmm. So you can really help yourself. Well, let's talk about in vitro. Smoking is another one. That's another big one that yes. really, really, really impairs both for men and women. And you've said that many, many times. Smoking, yeah. alcohol abuse, drug yeah. use, there all of that stuff is just not good. It's not. It's not worth the cost. We just can't do it. All right. Uh, let's talk in vitro fertilization. Sure. Does that actually get one pregnant or does that just make you more fertile? Well, here's the thing. Okay, so let's say a couple goes through all the investigations. They check the, the man, he's got enough sperm, the woman is having problems producing eggs. That's a common scenario because the, it either um, there's many, many reasons why a woman might have problems producing eggs, but she's basically not making as many as she should. So what they can do is artificially stimulate the woman's ovaries with shots, basically, and some pills sometimes, so that the um, ovaries produce lots of follicles, meaning lots of eggs. Then they get harvested, meaning what you do is you have an ultrasound, they stick a very long needle in through the inside, through, through the vagina, right up into the um, ovaries, and take the eggs out under ultrasound guidance and put them in a dish and mix them with the sperm and that's in vitro, it means in glass, okay, in, in a test tube basically. Now you have the chance of making some embryos and then um, they let the embryos uh, basically grow for a little while, a few days, and then they can implant them back in the woman um, and hopefully you get a baby. Now there's usually leftovers, right? More than, more than one embryo and then there's the whole dilemma of what to do with those. People freeze them for Longer, longer periods of time and think about implanting them later if the first one doesn't work out. But depending on the, the, the most important thing for in vitro fertilization is the um, age of the woman who gave the egg. So if, if you're doing in vitro on a 45 year old woman, it's going to be tough if it's her own eggs. That's why a lot of people will get donor eggs from a young 20 something year old woman whose eggs are very fresh. Mm. Or being the state of virility. Yeah, well, there, it's just basically like this. When, when, we, when little girls are born, we have about 8 million follicles in our ovaries. And then every month after puberty, we shed an egg mm -hmm. and so on. But, but basically, there's fewer and fewer as we get older. So a 20-something-year-old woman will have so many fresh eggs and an older woman no longer. They're expired. All right. Well, everybody, <laughs> please stay tuned. We're talking more about infertility and how you can hopefully avoid it or how you can treat it if you have it when we return.